Welcome back. You're watching FBC Sports. As mentioned earlier, the man of the moment, Elias Andelana, is back home, bringing with him the gold medal that he won at the Paralympics. He was given a special welcome by hundreds who turned up to greet him in Nandi. Christopher Chan reports. Delana shocked the world, but he was in for a bigger surprise when he walked off his flight at Nandi Airport. People cheered him on. For him, it was an overwhelming experience. Uh, no, I was just thinking just to come down and have a, just a cup of tea and say hi, congratulations. Uh, yes, this much. Uh, thank everyone. He has become a sporting icon, a national hero, golden boy, and the list goes on. A national hero now. Something you uh, have to look up to? Um, uh, yeah, you can say yes, but uh, for myself, I would just really like to be low profile. <laughs> but how does the champion feel being a gold medalist? Be one of my unforgettable moments, uh, I think, in my whole life. Uh, um, it won't come out from my mind. Uh, um, I cannot explain that feeling uh, only that moment can say. For now, he will enjoy the celebrations, being in the limelight before he starts preparations to defend his gold medal at the 2016 Paralympics in Brazil. Christopher Chan, FBC Sports. The McCoy Bulldogs are out to stamp their mark on this weekend's Fiji National Rugby League's Vodafone Cup final against Sambeto Roosters. But how will the team from 8 Miles achieve this? Akusi Tatali finds out. That's what everyone will hear come Saturday when the boys from Makoi take on Nandi Bay's Roosters. The Blues hope to put their name on the prestigious trophy as this is the maiden grand finale. Attack. We have to polish our attack and uh, uh, we have to make sure that our uh, midfielder will be strong. Bunivera says they have come a long way to reach the finals and they dedicate it to their supporters. The players are really proud of themselves for what they've been achieved this year. And uh, the supporters from the community, some of the silent supporters. The side will be boosted with services of former Fiji Bati players, Semi Dakao, Eliki Lendua and Etika Rokumbuli. The match will start at 3 p.m. at Berkers Park in Suva. Akusita Tale, FBC Sports. 16-year-old Juliet Timmy from Ovalau is off to New Caledonia for a two-week training stint at the Oceania Weightlifting Academy. Julia, who's a fifth former at Levuka Public School, won a local competition against almost 400 entrants to win the scholarship. The shy teenager who lifts 87 kg in the clean and jerk and 67 kg in the snatch event hopes to return a champion. Her coach Joe Vueti says it's all about hard work and commitment. Still, it's, uh, it's a very, very proud moment for Levuka and the whole of Fiji to, yeah, for, for Julia to be uh, awarding this kind of scholarship. That throwers from the Suvalami zone will be busy for the next 10 weeks. The Suvalami League started two weeks ago and since then, the weekly competition to find the best team has grown bigger. Shelvin Chand has more. Team Finance Pacific won the Suva zone and now they are aiming to conquer two districts. The team, made up of mainly taxi drivers, believe they have the passion and they can do it. I'm confident of that. Confident we can do that. We Suvalami, that's Vodafone sponsored. So last year we managed not been able to qualify for the finals, but this year we are sure. Unlike what people may think, darts requires dedication and above all, training. We train at our place. Uh, every Wednesdays or Thursdays we train. And or every Mondays we come and play the league. Darts is one of those sports that does not differentiate players on the agenda. And some of these ladies do give the men a run for their money. I know the majority of the people here is uh, male, but the ladies give them good competition. Darts throwers from the Central Division gather every Monday at the Defence Club. The competition is tough and often intense, but for the throwers, it's about the love of the game. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. 
The 2010 World Cup football runners-up, the Netherlands, have maintained their 100% record in the qualifying, qualifying rounds for the next tournament. The Dutch look very promising. Take a look. They beat Hungary 4-1 away thanks to Jermaine Lance Brace. He got his first after just three minutes and made it 3-1 in the second half. Calls from Bruno Martin Indy and Klaus Jan Huntler rounded out the win that sees them on six points in Group D. In Group H, Ukraine almost gained revenge on England for the Euro 2012 loss. The visitors scored first. A great strike from Yevin Konopyanka to put Ukraine up before the break. It took until the 86th minute England to draw a level. Frank Lampard converting a penalty after a handball in the Ukraine penalty box. Final score, one all. Germany were made to work hard against Austria in Vienna. Marcus Ruiz scored his third international goal in the dying minutes of the first half to take the lead for Germany. Mesut Ozil added the penalty to make it 2-0 up. Austria managed to pull one back after the break, but the visitors held on for a 2-1 win. Germany remained top of Group C. Elsewhere, France started their qualifying campaign with a comfortable 3-1 win at home to Belarus. And Italy got their first victory, but not a great performance as they could only beat Minos Malta 2-0 after they drew their opener in Bulgaria. But defending champion Spain got the 2014 World Cup qualifying campaign off to a nervy start. It took an 86-minute goal from Roberto Soldado to spare their blushes against Georgia. I want to express my compliments to the Georgian team, who defended well and were very enthusiastic and managing counter-attacks when they could. We had many difficulties and we were trying hard to score the goal, but it was difficult. I think we were very lucky to score the goal. That's it for sports from the team and I.